Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in this video today. I'm going to challenge myself to paint this night scene. Now, if you tried to paint a night scene before, you know how it can be a bit of a challenge, especially with watercolor that kind of seems to be made for you know, light to dark format. And here, a lot of the shapes are going to be defined by the highlights and then the huge amounts of dark uh, to mid value, perhaps. Um, just something a little bit different. And I wanted to let you in on my practice session and share with you my insights. I hope you're going to enjoy this one. Let's get started. Okay, so as I mentioned, a highly experimental piece by me. Uh, so I'm going to run through it rather fast because I just want to focus on the highlights of the process. I'm going to show you everything, but it's going to be time lapsed at around uh, triple speed. So starting with the drawing stage. Now, because most of this scene is very dark and only a few parts are a little lighter, uh, definitely compared to my uh, usual work, okay? Uh, of course, you'll find many scenes like this in paintings, but for me, I don't usually paint these. Uh, what I want to focus on is really understanding where the shapes of light are rather than where the shadows are. And you'll notice how I'm making the lines around them a little stronger than usual because I really want to notice where that strong yellow is, where that strong red is. By the way, they, there may be some barking because we have some guests soon and Ruth may bark. So my fair warning, it's going to be a bit of a weird one. Uh, but in any case, putting in the details now because I want to really focus on the highlights. Uh, I'm avoiding adding too many details. You know, I usually work kind of loose like that when I do cityscapes, but here you see me go even looser than usual. Okay, this is a little more than my usual stuff as well. Very connected. Uh, what you'd see uh, Alvaro Castanet, for example, doing quite a lot, eh? really connecting everything, barely lifting the pencil off the paper. Okay, um, and it's okay if some of the lines are a little crooked, that's fine. By the way, some of that is due to the angle at which I'm filming. Now, my logic behind this wash is I'm going to paint the highlights. So if you can see the sky is a muted, beautiful green, a color you don't see as often in the sky. And then under it, most of the highlights are actually yellow. So I'm using these colors for the underpainting. Now, while I was at it, I figured I might as well put in the details for the um, gradual transitions, especially near the clouds. So what I'm doing is after allowing it just to bit of time, I'm adding some more paint into the mix. Okay. Uh, and this is very hard to control. And because I was in the experimental experimentational mindset, I just went for it. But as you see, my edges aren't as defined as they should be. So I either should have waited a bit longer or just, you know, let it dry and then move on uh, and do this in the next uh, layer. But I didn't want to do that really, because uh, that would mean to have to blend all of these edges, the loose edges of the clouds. So instead, I'm kind of lifting the thing that's on the way, maybe using some paper to uh, pick it up. And this is pretty much it for this layer. Um, I'm, I'm just putting some touches here and there where the edges are going to stay, where I don't want to touch them in the next layer. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of working my way around the structures, but it was way too wet and you'll see the dark color creeping into the shadow. So I kind of let it go at this stage and allowed it to um, to just dry for a while uh, before I'm actually going over the layer of all of the shadows of the rest of the scene. You see, I'm just kind of ex establishing the borders of the buildings. Okay, now everything is dry and on to the next stage. Uh, what my goal here was to, is, was to connect everything that isn't a highlight. Uh, so what you see me do is just go over getting to the, that highlighted part in the sky, working around it, painting over the building, um, messing it up and going a little over the, uh, the light side and then dabbing again. You see it's experimentation uh, and, and a lot of failure as well. Um, and because this is such a complex wash that I should have probably uh, left the previous wash to just to leave all the things I did for the, previ the previous wash may have needed to be done here. It's just a bit hard to really realize where the paint should go, what should be painted. You see, I cut across the building where its shadow is, this tower, sorry, uh, and I paint around that. Then I go over the water, but then I have to be careful because uh, you see the building that faces forward towards us is a little bit of an orangey tint to it. We have that beautiful red on the tower. Uh, and things at this stage are highly chaotic. This is really chaotic. You have to trust yourself that something will come out of it. And I do believe something came out of it. Not exactly what <laughs> what I planned for. Uh, but still, I got the result close to maybe a good initial study for the scene, maybe towards a more finalized piece. 
Um, so now the bottom part is in the shadow. I'm cooling them off a bit because you do see that beautiful uh, contrast between the yellow of the sunlit building and the cool shadows. Uh, so going over it like that um, and working my way basically around the highlights. A very hard thing to do, very hard to visualize where they are. That was the, the main challenge of this wash and of this painting in general. It was just really hard to tell where all these things are. Uh, so you may want to do a little bit of a more accurate drawing, but even then you won't always really know what's what. It's just part of it, um, and it's, it's a sense that I still uh, grow and develop. At this stage, I have to remember I have yet to put in the darkest darks, and these are really going to dictate um, the, the shape of this entire scene. So it's okay if it doesn't look like much, because once this dries and things kind of even out, I will get to establish those. And this is exactly what happened. I let it dry for a while, you saw by the fading transition. And now on to, and that's Ruth, sorry about that. Now on to the hopefully final layer of shadows, okay? Uh, so this time I'm taking my time a little more because I can afford it. I don't have to worry about a very big space. And notice the benefits from the previous wash uh, that mainly allowed us to connect everything together. Had I not done the previous wash, highly connected with the blue. Uh, I wouldn't have gotten this, um, the, you know, it's still messy. It's very messy underneath, but at least I got something connected together. Uh, very often when the wash looks a little messy, uh, if you just give it some drying time, it will start making sense because the, the parts that are darker just because of the wetness will get a little lighter. Uh, it's just going to balance the whole thing in a nicer way. So here we go, establishing those shadows, big shapes, okay? Uh, I'm not worried about these small highlights and the statues and the buildings and all of that because it's just gonna be a huge hassle at the moment. So what I'm doing is just focusing on the largest shapes, the very largest shapes, sorry about the markings, that you will have to bear with it. Um, but in any case, I'm establishing some of the small details as I go along, if I feel like it, but it's not the main part of this watch, it's not the main important part. Um, now I'm moving on to these uh, more beautiful uh, possible potential focal points, which is the domes, which are all of these uh, details. This isn't really, again, easy to visualize. Um, I did struggle with it, admittedly. Uh, one of the parts that I really like is the tower, and I think it would be an interesting experiment to just do the tower maybe in a separate piece because with that I feel quite good and you will see later on also I add some very strong red and it works out really well. Uh, these windows are going to play a big big role in making it look good obviously and you see they really do make some parts pop. We're actually really near the end probably three quarters through the process. Now I felt like I'm missing a bit of the stronger yellow so I'm going over the highlights adding these stronger yellows, um, just even strong colors in general are a bit missing here. Uh, I will get that established with some uh, opaque reds, as you'll see in a moment. Putting in the water, now I made a decision to leave some part of the water a little lighter under that very lit building. I don't know if it helps, I don't know if it changes anything, uh, but that's how I chose to do it. Now here for the structures, there are some stronger shadows. I felt like it wasn't enough of a differentiation, so here I am going over everything pretty much uh, that needs further darkening. You will notice I did not go over the top part of the tower because only the red part felt darker. Okay, uh, now bluing this up to create a better contrast with the yellow. And really, I want to encourage you using this opportunity to, uh, if you like even just one thing about your painting, you can be happy about it. And for me, that's the tower for sure. And as long as I like one section of it, it's a success, even though the right side is a little bit of a mess. Um, as long as there is one point that I really enjoy, uh, then that's a win. And you can always try and do, you know, um, backwards engineer why you liked it, what made it work, uh, and what made the parts that didn't work not work, and then you can grow from it. Now here I am adding just a bit stronger red touches here and there. For the tower, this was actually really important because it was darker than it initially appeared, so that was really good. Adding in those uh, statues on top of the main uh, structure to the right, just getting those beautiful shapes within the shadows that it was too hard to paint around. It was just a big hassle and I didn't want to force myself to do that. 
um, adding some small details here and there. And finally, I'm gonna sign this uh, and remove the tape in a moment. This is my worst signature ever, probably. Uh, I'm gonna remove uh, the tape and show you the final result. I hope you enjoyed this one. Now let's wrap it up. So this is it once again. Here is the final result without the tape. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing this process and a lot of challenges, especially with bringing in this kind of a very bright red. Um, a lot of things that I I do find sometimes frustrating with watercolor and it does make me just on occasion want to try more acrylics and more like where you really mix the paint and there's an added element in watercolor where what you mix on the palette isn't necessarily what it's going to look like on paper and learning how to translate what it looks like on the palette to the desired result on paper is a bit complex. Um, it's something to work on, definitely something for me to improve. Um, and also <laughs> I'm going to try out some different mediums and see if any of these click more naturally for me in that regard, because I do find that helps me to better understand watercolor whenever I kind of travel off and try different media. Uh, but in any case, I hope you enjoyed this one. Let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. If you want to learn how to paint like me, how to let go, enjoy the painting process, be sure to check out my frustration free watercolor course. The link is always in the description box below. Take care and I will talk to you again real soon.